Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a closer look into the world of the DC-3. Whoa. That didn't work. Coming up next on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. In today's episode, we'll be using the Duckworks DC-3 Improvement Mod that can be had over at FlightSim.to. If you have not used this mod and love flying the DC-3, you have got to try this out. The developer is updating this constantly and it really has changed this aircraft tremendously. Links for the website will be down in the description. If you're new to the mod and downloading this for the first time, be sure to check out the change logs. If you're using external hardware such as a Bravo Throttle Quadrant and using SPAD.next or FSUIPC, make sure that you use the throttle settings that they have here for the LVARs so that the throttles are going to work inside the aircraft. Or you can just revert to a previous version, but with this version that they have just released, we now have access to the superchargers in the aircraft. So we'll be taking a look at that today as well. To start off the video, we'll be going over our flight plan for today then we'll be checking out the POH and all the power settings of the aircraft. This will really come into play when we're going to be planning our descent, which would be the next thing that we're going to be talking about. Lastly, we will not be going over all the checklists in flight. I'm going to be doing the flight by memory. I've done this a couple times, so hopefully we'll be all right. But I just want to let everybody know that I'm not a pilot, nor have I ever flown in a DC-3, so I'm going to do the best I can. This is not going to be a procedural flight, so if you see me make a mistake with a light or something, don't get too upset. But rest assured that all the links for the POH and the checklist will be down in the description, so be sure to check those out. If you have any comments or questions along the way, let me know down below in the comments section and I'll do my best at answering your question. If you enjoy the video today, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. So let's hop over into my favorite flight planning tool, Little Nav Map. If you're unfamiliar with this tool, links will also be down in the description for the website where you can pick it up, as well as a two-part video tutorial series that I did on this fantastic application. Today's flight plan is going to take us from KGUC all the way over to KMTJ. This flight plan is brought to us by the Sky for Sim tablet. You can find this in the bush trips and go down to the 1950s airliner section and it will be in there. I did make a slight correction to the flight plan as I added the ILS to runway 17 into our arrival airport. We will be cruising at a flight altitude today of 11,000 feet and our first flight restriction will be at 8,100 feet. Let's take a look at page 94 of the POH. Down in the speed section, we can see the normal climb speed for the DC-3 is 115 knots of indicated airspeed. That means regardless of our ascent rate, we will try to maintain this speed all the way up to our cruising altitude. Below that, we have some takeoff performance information. We have two settings to use either a 1200 base horsepower or a 1050 base horsepower for our engines. To the right of those horsepower settings will give us our manifold pressure as well as the RPM needed to achieve that base horsepower rating. Below takeoff performance is the climb power section. In normal climb, our plane will produce anywhere between 7 to 800 horsepower with mixture in auto rich, and the horsepower rating is going to be dependent upon our setting for our climb. We'll get into that in just a second. On the top right of this page, we have our climb power chart, and this is going to be for the 700 horsepower setting for the aircraft. If you have never used one of these charts before, let's go over that real quick. Our departure airport is going to be about 7,600 feet, so we're just going to round that up to 8,000 feet. All of our altitudes will be over here on the left-hand side, and this is going to be the altitude that you're currently at. At the very top, we'll list the carburetor air intake temperature, so we're going to use a temperature of zero just for this tutorial. So we will go from zero down and from 8,000 over, and that's going to reach a 31.7 manifold pressure. So that's what we will use for the 700 horsepower setting for our engines. Like I told you earlier, there are a couple other settings for our horsepower. As you can see under climb performance, they actually give us a 1200 horsepower setting and a 1050 horsepower setting. 
So now you'll probably ask, well, what is the manifold pressure setting to achieve each of these horsepower ratings? But to find that, we're just going to skip down real quick. In the limitations section under power plant, you can see all the different horsepower ratings or settings that we have available. Our maximum takeoff power setting is 48 inches and 2700 RPM. We can only maintain this for approximately one minute before we're going to have to retard that a little bit. Below that is what's called our Mito power, which is our max continuous power. That's going to be at 42 inches, 2550 RPM. That's going to give us the 1050 horsepower rating. Below that, we have our two different climb settings, either the 800 horsepower or the 700 horsepower setting. So now let's jump back up to the top here under the cruise power section. And as you can see, our normal cruise is going to produce approximately 625 horsepower at 2050 RPM with the mixtures in auto lean. There is a procedure for switching into cruise power once you achieve your cruising altitude, and that follows here below. We're going to maintain our climb power during level off until the airspeed reaches our normal cruising airspeed. Second, we're going to set our manifold pressure in accordance with the altitude and carburetor air temperature as indicated on the cruise control chart that's below. Then we're going to place our mixtures in auto lean, close the cow flaps, and adjust the trim for level flight. So first off, let's talk about our normal cruising speed. To find that information, we're going to have to go two pages down to our speed section. The maximum cruising speed of the aircraft is 158 knots. So once our aircraft achieves about 150 to 158 knots, we will then proceed with the procedure that we went over with above to achieve our cruise power setting. Second, let's take a look at our manifold pressure that we would have to set in accordance with our altitude and carburetor air temperature. That's going to be on the cruise power chart here below. This chart we're going to use exactly the same as we did for the chart above. So for our flight today, we'll be taking us up to about 11,000 feet for our cruising altitude. And as you can see here on the left hand side of the cruise power chart, we don't have an 11,000 feet mark. But let's show you how we're going to accommodate that. We're going to use the same outside or carburetor air temperature of zero, and we're going to follow that down in this column. As you can see, between 9,000 and 10,000 feet was only about a 0.1 inches of manifold pressure difference. So for 11,000 feet, I can say we would probably be at about 29.2 or 29.1 inches of manifold pressure. So if we just round down to 29, you'll be just fine in the aircraft. Below that, we have some holding manifold pressures depending on your altitude. Our fuel consumption chart here below, based on our engine setting for horsepower. At the top right gives us some descent information. So under normal conditions, we're going to descend at approximately 300 feet per minute. That's pretty slow. Normally, the airspeed in descent will be from 135 to 185 knots. Now that's knots of indicated airspeed. We're going to maintain cruise power during our descent, and we're going to leave the mixture control in auto lean until we get our approach checklist accomplished. Then we're going to reduce our throttles to maintain cruise power. Now keep in mind here that as you are decreasing in altitude, you are also going to have to decrease your throttle as you are coming down in altitude because your manifold pressure will go up. And vice versa, as you are ascending to your cruise altitude, you will have to continually add throttle to maintain the proper manifold pressure on ascent. Below that we have some rough air procedures, single engine operation, and again the power plant limitations. All right, so that's going to finish us up for the POH power settings. If anybody has any questions here, just please let me know down below in the comments section. So let's take a look back at the flight plan for today. Now, down below in the description, I have posted two very good links that are going to help you plan your top of descent. This is going to be for any aircraft. The first thing you'll need to know is a conversion between knots and miles per minute. You're going to need to know how many miles across the ground you will be traveling at a certain knot speed. The other link that I'll have down below is for calculating your top of descent. This will give you a couple different scenarios in which you may run into. So this is another really good piece of information. All the links will be down below. So make sure to check those out. What are we going to need to know to calculate our top of descent? 
We need to know our current altitude, which is going to be 11,000 feet. We also need to know our first target altitude, that's going to be at 8,100 feet. We also need to know the rate of descent that we want to use, and that's going to be 300 feet per minute. The next thing we need to know is how many feet per minute will we be traveling at our current speed. Here's where that conversion link down below in the description comes in handy. So I'm just rounding us up to 200 knots. Now remember, according to the POH, we should be anywhere between 135 and 185 on our descent. So I'm just going to say 200 to make it easy. And as you can see, it's going to give us 3.84 miles every minute that we will be traveling across the ground. So we're also going to round this up just to give us a little bit of extra time because once we get to our target altitude, we then need to allow some extra time for the plane to slow down. And these big planes don't slow down very fast, so just like the DC-6, it's going to take a little bit of extra time for that to happen. How do we figure out our top of descent? We're going to take our cruising altitude and subtract our target altitude from that. So that'll equal 2,900 feet of altitude that we need to cover from our cruising altitude down to our target altitude. We're now going to take that figure of 2,900 feet and divide that by our rate of descent being 300 feet. That will give us the approximate time it's going to take us to get from 11,000 feet down to 8,100 feet. Now the reason why this is in minutes is because we are calculating in feet per minute. So now we're going to take the 9.66 minutes that it's going to take us to get from our cruising altitude down to our target altitude and we're going to multiply that by the amount of miles per minute we will be traveling at 200 knots. That's going to equal 38.66 miles. So we need to start our descent approximately 38 miles prior to our first target altitude of 8,100 feet. So according to our chart here, we can see that this leg is going to be approximately 21 nautical miles, and this leg is going to be about 10 nautical miles. So that's going to total 31 nautical miles, meaning I'm going to need to start my top of descent somewhere right around in here. I hope all this makes sense to you. If you have any questions on this, please let me know down below in the comments section. And also be sure to reference that information I left down below in the links. All right, so now that you know our flight plan, you also know where we're gonna be planning our top of descent. We can now hop in the aircraft and get some things started. But as you can see here on the windows, we are pretty iced up already. So let's see just how bad it's gonna be. Oh boy, oh yeah, we have some ice. I wonder if we can open the windows. Yes, we can. Okay, good. <laughs> At least we can see a little bit and maybe the, uh, the icing will work. Before we actually get any power started in the aircraft, I just want everybody to take notice of our cow flaps that we have here on the right hand side. Next to the cow flaps, we have our hydraulic system pressure. And by using this mod, the cow flaps will not activate if we do not have any pressure in our hydraulic system. The other really cool thing that they've done with the cow flaps is they made them so that they are a uh, soft close. To manually add pressure in our hydraulic system, we have this cool little pump handle right down here to the right hand side. Now, if you try clicking on that, it's not gonna do anything for you. We have to, uh, I guess you could say activate it maybe. So we're gonna come over here to this little knob, give that a turn, and now we can pump up on our handle. Now, as I'm pumping up the handle, you can take a look at the hydraulic system pressure and we have some pressure building. Once we get up into the green section, we're good to go. Turn that knob back off again, put the handle back down. And now I can hopefully show you what's gonna happen here when I close the cow flaps. Let's see if I can do this fast enough. There you go, you see them close very softly. On the default stock version of this aircraft, the cow flaps seem to slam closed and slam open. And with this, it really makes it nice because it gives that, ah, look at that, beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna make sure both of our cow flaps are set in the open position and then set to off. 
Next thing we need to do is get some power in the aircraft, so hopefully we can thaw out these windows. So the battery master is going to be over here on the left, and we also have the GPU power right above that. Now that we've got that going on, let's see if we can turn on some windshield de-icing. And let's see how good that's going to work. All right, so we'll let that go a little bit and see what happens. Hopefully it falls out some windows. In the center section here, we have our secondary nav and comm radios, as well as our ADF and our transponder down here below. In the very center, this is our magnetos for our left and right engine and our master pull off and push on in the very center. On the right eyebrow side, we have some lighting over here, the inverter. We also have the carb de-icer and that will function in coordination or conjunction with our carb de-icing handles down here. That's also another feature of this add-on that these are variable now, so they don't just slam on and slam off. You can set those to whatever you like. Below that, we have the engine starter and the meshing of the flywheel. To the right of that, we have our boost pumps for right and left side. We also have some cockpit lights, pilot sidewall lights. Above the cabin lights, we have the prop feather for the right-hand side, and over on the left-hand eyebrow, we have the prop feather for the left engine. Let's take a look here in the center real quick and see what all this does. I really don't think the engine pump selector works. It does function and it makes some noises, but I don't think it does anything in particular. We also have an emergency shutoff valve. I'm not really sure if that does anything either, so... If it does, and you know, let me know down below in the comments. Below that, we have the flap handle, and this, we have three different positions. We have an up position, we have a down position, and a neutral position. Now, you're not going to see me using this flap handle during flight, because I am using my Bravo throttle quadrant. That'll also mean you're not going to see me reaching for the gear handle, which actually there's two different positions for that. So you've got the safety latch way down here. And then you have your gear handle right here to put your gear up and down. Now the other cool thing, right in the very center of the aircraft here, we have our fire extinguisher, so if we click on that, we can choose either the right or left hand motor, and if you pull this up, that will activate your fire extinguisher. Below that, if you click on this little part of the door, that will open up our oil and fuel shutoffs right there. Now in fitting with the theme of hard to reach, <laughs> down below here is our autopilot, uh, we can also activate our autopilot on the cap 140 above, but right next to the autopilot, way in here, let me see if I can zoom in, you'll see this one little knob and that is our parking brake. All right, so it looks like our GPS has come to life here. We are using the GNS 530 mod that you can pick up in the marketplace. If you're unsure of how to use the GNS 530, I've done a tutorial series, I'll post links down below. This series is done with the PMS 50 add-on, which is still available and you can pick up over on their website. Some things are going to be a little bit different between that version and this version. Most of everything should still apply. Now taking a look back down at the center console here, in the default version of the aircraft, these two levers over here on the left hand side do not really do anything. These are what's going to activate our blowers. So how this will translate, this will be our left blower and this will be our right blower. At the current state, they are in low blower mode. To activate high blower, they will be pushed forward. We'll go through that once we get into flight. At the front of this console, we also have a manifold gauge selector or a manifold pressure gauge selector. And here's where we're able to bleed the pressure out of our gauges. I don't really think at the current time this does anything, but maybe in the future that will have some effect. Down below we also have some trim. On the left hand side of the cockpit for the pilot window, and this also applies for the passenger window, we are now able to open and close the windows uh, variable so they don't just open and close. Well, that's a pretty neat feature as well. And if you don't already know, our prop levers are over here on the left, our throttles are in the middle, and our mixtures are over here on the right hand side. Now if we take a look at the mixture side, you can see the different settings that we're going to need to use for today's flight. We have our auto rich setting and our auto lean setting. So while we're over here, before we jump off of this view, one of the things that we need to do is turn on our engine tank selectors. So the right hand side can be a little bit difficult to see if you're in the pilot seat. So that's why we're going to go ahead and do this now. We're going to switch these to our right main and we will set our left side to our left main. 
On the right hand side of the cockpit, we also have a couple switches down here, and these are going to be able to open some doors and throw some eye candy on the outside of the aircraft. So it looks like we got some luggage back here. You can see the GPU up front, that's modeled very nicely. And we've got some chocks and some fire extinguishers to fit the part. Back in the cockpit, we have our engine fuel selectors down here. So uh, this will tell us our left main, right main, and we have our aux tanks down here below. We're gonna turn off all of those eye candy features on the outside, just so we don't forget that. At the very top below our compass, we also have our windshield wiper knobs. So that's gonna turn on and off the windshield wipers on the left and right hand side, but I don't really think that's gonna do anything as far as the rain animations that get on the windshield. So, oh, and one thing I did forget to mention at the very beginning of the cockpit tour here is if you're wanting to use the GNS 530 edition of this aircraft, in the livery section, you're going to make sure you look for the retrofit model. And any of the retrofits will have the GNS 530 in the aircraft. So let's take a look at some of the gauges over on the right hand side and we'll work our way back over to the pilot side. Starting over here on the far right hand side, this is going to be our carburetor air temperature gauges. This setting is what we're going to need to know to be able to accurately calculate our manifold pressure when we're looking at our cruise and our climb power charts. To the left of the carburetor temperature is our cylinder air temperature. Our cow flaps are what we're gonna use to be able to maintain this temperature properly during our flight. To the left of that, we have the oil temperature of both engines. I don't really think we can do anything there to manipulate those. Below that, we have some hydraulic pressure, de-icing, and we also have the outside air temperature gauge. In the very center from right to left, we have our fuel pressure gauge. Next to that, we have our oil pressure for both engines, RPM for both engines, and our manifold pressure for both engines. One thing that you do have to make sure of in this aircraft before you start your flight is that you sync up your gyro with your compass here in the center. So if we take a look at the compass here in the very center, you can see we're probably right around 208 as far as our heading. Now, if we take a look at the gyro down here, you can see that we are not set up for that current heading. That is really gonna throw you off, so that's one of the first things that you need to do is set your gyro for the proper heading. All right, so right around there, below the gyro, we have our heading gauge, and I just wanna to touch on this real quick because the heading is gonna be a little bit different as far as how the gauge functions versus some of the other aircraft you may be used to. On this particular gauge, we have two different hands. We have one that looks like an outline, and then we have a solid hand here. So this may confuse some people when you're in the moment and you're trying to sync up your heading bug with your current heading. You're not gonna make the heading bug straightforward like this is, because that means you're gonna want the plane to point to the north. You're gonna to need to put that outline hand around the solid white hand, just like that, and now we have our heading bug synced up with our current heading. Over here on the bottom right, this is what we're gonna use for our ILS approach. This will give us our glide slope and the localizer. This is our ADF, and in the middle here is our compass. All right, so that pretty much takes care of all of the cockpit familiarization. Let's hop down to the GNS 530 and take a look at our flight plan in there. Okay, so let's take a look at the GNS 530 and make sure that we have everything set up in here correctly. Under the flight plan button, we will be able to see our entire flight plan for today and everything looks pretty good in here. The next thing that I would like to do before we actually take off from the airport, and this is not mandatory, but I like to enter my ILS frequency into my standby. Now there's a couple ways in which we can do that here. The second way to get our ILS frequency is to go to our waypoint section, and then we're gonna scroll over to the frequencies page. Down below, you can see we have the ILS runway 17. You're gonna press in on your right knob, and then we can use the outer scroll knob to scroll down. Once we get there, we can just hit enter and it will auto populate into our standby frequency. So just to show you how that's gonna work, I'm gonna swap the frequencies real quick. 
and then hit enter and there you go you can see it populated once you get that done you need to make sure that you remove the cursor off the screen so that you can get back to your main navigation page all right great so now that we have that done we also want to make sure that we are in gps mode not our vlock mode so we'll hit the cdi button now while we're down here we need to set up for our flight in the autopilot section Current altimeter for today is 1023 or 30.20. We need to set up our altimeter inside the CAP 140 as well as on the aircraft altimeter over here so we know our correct altitude. So to set up the barrow in the CAP 140, we'll hit the barrow button and then we're just going to rotate this knob to 1023. Now that's just one extra step that we need to take here just to make sure that the autopilot is going to keep us at the correct altitude. Now, one other thing in the cap 140 in the barrow, I have no idea how to actually set this to inches instead of kilopascals. So if somebody can tell me, that would be great down in the comments section. In any case, let's make this one say 3023. And it doesn't look like it's science here. We're just gonna kind of get it about right. <laughs> The next thing we're going to do is set our altitude for 11,000 feet. All right, so now that we have all that set up, we can get ready and start the aircraft so we can get this thing up in the air. I just want to let you know that I am going to be switching into autopilot very shortly after we take off. This way I can use the autopilot to help maintain that 115 climb knots that we need to maintain. This is going to be very similar to the traditional aircraft and starting procedures with one little caveat. So we need to put our mixtures all the way up if you're using a Bravo or any sort of external hardware. The reason is that once the engines fire, they automatically go in auto rich. And if your throttle quadrant, you have them set it on cutoff, when you go to move them, they're going to switch to cutoff real quick and could possibly shut off the engine. So I'm just going to leave them right in the auto rich position right now. The next thing we need to do is to come up top and make sure that we have the magneto button or the main master pushed in. And then we're going to start with the right engine first. So before we actually want to energize that starter, we're going to start the boost pump on the right hand side. We're going to come down below and take a look at the fuel pressure. And now you can see two different hands here. So we have fuel pressure getting to that engine. We're going to crack our throttles a little bit and full forward on the propellers. Now we're going to come back up top and we're going to flip on the starter for the right hand engine. We're going to allow this to spool up to about 8 to 10 seconds and then we're going to energize the right hand starter. Once the starter is energized, we are then going to hurry up and flip on the magnetos to both and we're going to activate the primer on the right hand engine. Primers are not a necessity for starting this aircraft, but because we are in some very cold temperatures here today, we are going to be using the primer. So let's go ahead and see how this is going to work. All right, you can hear the starter in the background, and we are going to hit our mesh, flip this on, Flip that up. All right, and as you can see, it is not going to start perfectly every time. So we're going to try this one more time. Turn that back off. Make sure everything is set down here. Hit the starter. Now you can hear that spooling up in the background. Mesh, all the way on, primer. And there we go. Now you can also see those awesome smoke effects coming out of the engine. That is also not on the default aircraft. That is something the developer has put in here. They also have a mod for the DC-6 that adds these smoke effects as well. Now one thing I will say with those smoke effects, if you are in VR and you try to peer your head out the window and take a look at the engine, well, you won't ever see the smoke effects uh, from VR on the inside of the plane. Unfortunately, you have to be on the outside of the plane to see those. 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and repeat for the left-hand side, turn off the boost pump, and the left-hand boost pump comes on. We can look down, see our fuel pressure has risen. We're gonna go back up to the tops, energize the left-hand starter, And I think you can hear that in the background ever so faintly. All right, sounds like the starter has spooled up. Activate the mesh and prime the engine. Hey, there we go. Perfect, we can now turn off our boost pumps. We can get rid of that GPU on the outside. Let's get some lights on. And we'll turn on our position lights and our pedo heaters. We can now turn the windshield de-icing off. Now you would also want to make sure that you have your proper uh, transponder frequency up here. We're not going to worry about that today. All right, let's go ahead and shut our window. And I think that's really cool. You can hear the sounds actually uh, get a little bit quieter when we close the windows. So that's a nice touch. Before we go down to the end of the runway, I'm going to set my flaps. Over here on the left-hand side, you can see that flap indication of where my flaps are positioned. Let's just make sure everything else is good. Oh yeah, one other thing. All right, so on our trim indicator, we want to make sure that the trim is set just a little bit positive of zero. The reason for that is you want the plane to gradually lift off the runway. You don't want to yank back on the yoke because that will just most likely stall the aircraft. Okie doke, so we just got our taxi procedure, so we're going to turn off the parking brake and we can get this thing rolling. Oh, and by the way, if you have any questions so far, just let me know down below. Let's see. Use a space bar on your keyboard and that'll put you in a more upward position here. Now the other thing that I didn't mention that's kind of important, down here on the RPM gauge, you want to make sure that you're at least at 1200 RPMs or higher, um, otherwise you're going to get some uh, oil lights that are going to come on. Alright, so let's hit the parking brake real quick and just make sure that we have everything set up for departure. Uh, we are going to turn our cow flaps now into the trail position. Now, one thing you can see on the outside here, the cow flaps didn't actually move into the trail position yet. So I'm not sure if that's just a little bug here and maybe that'll get fixed in the future. But I think after we take off, you're going to see those cow flaps retract a little bit. All right, so we got our flaps in our takeoff position. Propeller pitch is all the way forward. We have our trim set. Our mixture is set, so that's good. We have already calibrated our compass or our gyro, so that's set. Let's get out on the runway now and then we can sync up our heading bug. Oh. Yep, see, I forgot to turn the landing lights on, so somebody yell at me. <laughs> All right. I also want to make sure that we set our ascent rate inside of the cap 140 so we're just going to hit the altitude button and then up and we're just going to set that for say 400 feet per minute as that's what it said in the POH so we'll just leave it for that for right now until we build up some speed over here. That might be a little bit better for everyone. Alright so because we're at such a high altitude we're not going to be able to achieve that 48 inches of manifold pressure for max takeoff. So we're just going to go full throttle here. For normal takeoff of the aircraft, you would use your max takeoff power that we went over in the POH. Once the gear has been raised on the aircraft, you would reduce down to your Mito power until the flaps have been fully retracted. Once that is done, you would then move into initial climb or your normal climb power for the aircraft until your cruising altitude. We want to make sure that we sync up our heading with the uh, heading bug right now. All right, so that is synced. We are set to go. Let's go with full power. Uh. 
actually going to activate the autopilot and put us into heading hold, maintaining the 400 feet per minute. Now I can go ahead and bring up some flaps. So our speed is coming up. We can now increase by pressing on the up button on the cap 140. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is maintain the climb rate so that we can achieve that 115 knots, which is right around where that little yellow dot is there. Airspeed is dropping just below the 115 knots, so I'm going to bring down our ascent down to about 900 feet per minute. That's still not enough. At this point, we are going to turn us into nav mode. All right, the autopilot has picked up our GPS course, so we are all good to go up to 11,000 feet. Looks like we're climbing at a great speed. Now all we need to do is to maintain our manifold pressure as we're ascending. Now here's the issue with this particular flight. This is going to put us up into the area of where you may need to start using your blower. So if you do want to activate your blower on either side, then how we would need to do that is you don't just flip on your blower. You're going to need to reduce your throttle and bring back your manifold pressure, I would say at least 15 to 20 inches. And then you're going to activate your blower. So let me show you how that's going to work. We're going to bring that all the way back to 20 inches. And then we're going to activate that blower on the left hand side. Once it comes up, then we can start increasing our power again up to where we want it to be. Now, because we're already at 11,000 feet, I'm going to turn off that blower. I just wanted to show you exactly how that's going to operate. We're almost at about cruising speed, so now we're going to reduce down to about 29 inches of manifold pressure, and we're going to reduce that RPM all the way down to 2050 RPM. Next, we're going to come over here to the mixtures, and we're just going to bring those back. Try to get it in its spot. There we go. All right. Let me know down below in the comments if you're actually able to use the high blower setting on this aircraft when you take off. Now there's another cool feature on this GPS that has a VNAV function and let's take a look at that real quick. So to activate the cursor you're going to press in on the inner knob and then we can scroll through each of these settings. So we're going to set this to our 8,100 feet, hit the enter button, and then we're going to scroll down to target position. So let's just say we want to be at 8,100 feet one mile before we get to a certain waypoint. Again, we'll hit enter, scroll over to the waypoint that we want to be before. And if we take a look at the flight planner here again, that waypoint is the BRUUK waypoint. So we want to make sure that we enter that here, BRUUK, hit enter. So now this VNAV will tell us when we need to start our descent to be at 8,100 feet one mile before the BRUUK waypoint. We're also going to set our VNAV profile for 300 feet. Every time you set one of these, you need to hit the enter button. Now you can see here it'll tell us we need to begin our descent in about eight minutes. If anybody has any questions about the GNS 530, let me know down below in the comments section and I will try to answer those for you as best as I can. In the meantime, let's take in all the views that Microsoft Flight Simulator has to offer. And boy, isn't this amazing out here. So the other thing that I want to do once we hit cruise is to close our cow flaps over here on the right hand side. Now I have taken notice of this during flight and I really don't think that it changes much of our cylinder head temperatures. The other thing that uh, I can show you 
is if we take a look at this pump selector here that I said really doesn't do anything, if we turn that on, you can take a look at the hydraulic pressure, and it does actually change the hydraulic system pressure. So that's a neat feature that uh, brings it a little bit closer to realism. But because it doesn't do anything for us, we're just going to leave that off. Let's take a look at our VNAV real quick, and it's telling us about five minutes to go. So let's see where that's going to put us. Wow. Yeah, we got a little bit of icing on the windows, so let's go ahead and turn on the windshield de-icer. And hopefully that should take care of that. Once we clear this mountain here, then we're going to start our descent down to 8,100 feet. Now I know we can clear it because I've done this flight several times just to make sure everything was going to come out right. So let's do a scan down here on our gauges real quick. We're still at 29 inches. We're just about 2050. Uh, everything is looking good. Our temperatures are looking good. I'm not sure if carburetor icing is implemented into the logic of this modification, but uh, just note you can also activate your carb de-icer up here. When you do that, it will automatically put both your de-icing switches down into the uh, positive location. So it looks like we have rounded the bend here, and if we take a look at that VNAV again, you can see that we should already be started our descent. We just want to plug 8,100 feet into the cap 140, hit the alt button, and then we can hit down for 300 feet per minute. Now one of the other neat features with the GNS 530, once we get close to the localizer frequency, the GPS should actually switch over into localizer and pick up that frequency. As you can see here, we actually have the frequency had populated with the location or what the identifier is for the localizer right over here on the left. So it looks like the plane is pretty much following what it states in the manual for the POH on our descent because we are right around 180 knots. Still make sure the landing lights are on. We have never turned those off. Uh, prop de-icer. Does that even work? Yes, it does. I should have turned that on too. Now, if you take a look at the manifold pressure down here, you can see that we have now increased to about 30. So we're just going to back off the throttles a little bit. And at this time, you can actually, because I know we're going to need to keep backing off, I'm going to set it down to about 28 inches. And as we descend, we will, we will increase back up to that 29. So you are able to do that as well, as long as you're maintaining that speed on our descent. If we take a look back at the GNS 530 in the VNAV section, you can see over here under VSR, this is the required vertical speed to get to that location that we had entered here above. And we are coming in a little bit high, so it's telling us we need to increase our negative vertical speed. We're just going to leave it where it's set at, and hopefully we should come in just fine. We also want to make sure that we start decreasing speed once we get to our initial approach fix here. Um, and that's because it's going to take a little bit of time for this aircraft to bleed off some of that airspeed and you want to be at your proper speed before you actually start your descent on your approach otherwise you won't ever be able to catch up so I'll show you how that's going to work here in just a second and hopefully I don't mess it up myself I hope I haven't bored you too much if you're enjoying today's content make sure to go down below and hit that subscribe and tick that little bell smash on that thumbs up button it really helps our channel get found by other viewers Okay, looks like we are coming into some heavy, heavy cloud cover here. So we may push out of this when we make this left-hand turn. As it doesn't look too bad over this way, but uh, we will see. So it looks like we have a distance of 1.2 miles, 1 mile until we get to BRUUK. So we should be just fine. We're now going to start bringing back the throttle. So I'm going to bring us all the way back to 25 inches. And I'm still going to maintain the 2050 RPM on both engines. So it looks like we have about three miles to bleed off some of this speed before we make it onto our descent. Taking a look at these speeds real quick one more time. Uh, we have quarter flaps at 135, half flaps at 99, and full flaps at 97. So we need to get our speed way, way down so that we can activate some flaps. So it looks like we're not bleeding speed off as much as I'd like. I'm now going to bring the manifold pressure back to 20. GPS has already put us into VLOC mode, has switched us from GPS to NAV. 
And down here, you can see that our glide slope is starting to come down level with the aircraft. We're not actually going to hit the approach button until the glide slope has come down to meet the aircraft altitude. If you do this beforehand, the airplane will try to ascend to meet the glide slope. All right, looks like we're there. We're going to hit approach. All right, so we can take a look at our speed over here on the left. So let's go ahead and add some flaps. We're good to do that. And um, we really can't add half flaps until we decrease our speed a little bit more. Looks like we're coming in good. It looks like we're maintaining the glide slope. First time I did this did not turn out very well. All the landing lights are still on. Everything looks good. We still have no visibility. So hopefully we will be able to land the plane on this try. Also mind the manifold pressure because as we descend, it is going to continue to rise. At this point, we are almost down to the runway. So we're going to increase our prop to full propeller now. Our mixture is in full mix. We are almost down to 100. So we're going to go ahead and lower half flaps now. Looks like we are still on the glide slope. Approach mode is still activated. Autopilot is still engaged. See, that's one thing you want to make sure that when this switches over into localizer mode on your approach, that your autopilot stays engaged in the nav mode. Because sometimes it will tick off and you have to manually activate nav mode again. So just be mindful of that. All right, we can see the runway is just ahead. We are just now below 100 knots, so we're going to increase our throttle just a bit. We can now add three quarter flaps. And we want to land somewhere around 90 knots, somewhere right around there. 100 to 90 knots is going to be our touchdown speed. Now, right before touchdown, we're going to go ahead and turn off the autopilot. So we're going to hit the autopilot button here. And we're going to put full flaps down. We're going to bring back the throttle just a bit. Now, on touchdown, we want to make sure that uh, you bring up your flaps right away. So this way we can get the tailwheel down on the runway so we have some steering. Lead off a little speed. I know we're a little long. All right, flaps are going to go up. Ooh, this thing is all over the place. There we go, tailwheel is down. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is how we do an ILS approach with the DC-3. The landing wasn't all that great, but as everyone knows, landing this aircraft is a little bit tricky. If you have any questions throughout the video today, make sure to post those down below in the comments section. And if you learned something and like to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.